head back to Madrid then, shall we? Ahead of the big match this Sunday. Real Madrid against Barcelona, of course, exclusively live on ESPN+. Plus. Coverage starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be in the studio and, of course, pitch side will be Alexis Nunes, who joins us now from the Spanish capital. Uh, how's your day been in Madrid, Alexis? Oh, Dan, I've been missing you and Ale Moreno, my usual nice. lunch crew, so nice. much so that I had to go find better company, some would say, better in the form company, of Atletico right. Madrid's Marcos Llorente. It's a big week for Atletico Madrid. They just knocked out Manchester United in quite the fashion of the Champions League just a few days ago. So Marcos Llorente is someone we've been trying to sit down with for a couple of months now because he's got such an interesting lifestyle. He's become sort of a cult figure for health here in Spain. He takes his sleeping routines very seriously. He breaks his fast at 2 p.m. every day. He eats very, very healthy, no gluten, no sugar, which is something that you may expect from footballers. But honestly, if you ask other footballers, they say he takes his living to another level. So he actually owns a chain of restaurants here um, called Naked and Sated, and he invited us in to kind of see what it's like to, to eat like him for a day and probably see if we could walk out with a six-pack of abs like he has. And I think <laughs> I have. Wow. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's I'll impressive. I'll show you now, but I'm cold. <laughs> Imagine if we sent Stevie there. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. yes. break, a yeah. break as fast that's, at 2 o'clock. That's the other side <laughs> of the argument. Fasting is not in Stevie's vocabulary. Uh, that's Marco sure. Llorente on this end, Stevie on that end. Uh, and you managed to have a chat with him as well, Alexis. Yeah, exactly. We definitely had to have a chat with him because the feature is going to come out in probably another two weeks or so. So you'll get to see more about his lifestyle and exactly what we did get to eat and how they make it. But we had to pick his brain about that win over Manchester United because it was just a huge one to go to Old Trafford with all of the animosity that they kind of face and walk away with the win in triumphant fashion as they did. Despite all the questions that we have even asked about Atletico Madrid, I, I don't know if many people, despite how bad Manchester United have been, would have expected them to come away with that win and this is what he had to say. Una semana super. Sí. Una semana de sueños, me imagino que sí. Sí, sí, totalmente. Y bueno, una semana también eh, para celebrar que que sí que es verdad que en el mundo del fútbol pues eh, hay poco tiempo para celebrar porque enseguida tienes eh, otro partido, otra competición, entonces pues intentar celebrar estos pequeños momentos eh, con la familia, con los amigos es es importante. Te voy a decir un secreto y lo voy a desvelar delante de la cámara. Tú sabes que ella es fan de Manchester Ay, United. <risa> Alguien tiene que ser en estos días. <risa> Eso es verdad, algún fan tiene que tener. <risa> sí, pero imagínate ganar en Old Trafford y también jugando... Bueno, ahí estaba Cristiano Ronaldo. ¿Cómo fue tu, o sea, tu victoria favorita o un poquito ahí? Bueno, favorita no, pero sí, muy importante. Eh, y más allí, en ese campo... Eh, histórico, eh, la verdad que, que fue bonito, además eh, para el equipo era muy importante eh, pasar la, la eliminatoria, nos iba a, a dar mucha fuerza para lo que queda y la verdad que fue una noche especial. ¿Fue más difícil de lo que esperabas o más fácil? Mm, normal, eh, sabíamos que iba a ser difícil pero el equipo estaba convencido de que, de que íbamos a, por lo menos, a complicarle las cosas y, bueno, pues así lo hicimos. Te digo una cosa, eh, Stanford Bridge, Anfield, eh, Old Trafford, os van a vetar la entrada a, a Inglaterra. <risa> <risa> sí, eso, eso, eso se habló antes de, antes de este partido, bueno, que, que se nos daba bien eh, eso, ese país y, y bueno, pues hemos, hemos repetido esa, esa hazaña. Y ahora que viene el sorteo, o sea, ¿qué quieres? Yo, yo siempre digo esto, al final eh, está claro que hay equipos eh, más grandes, equipos más pequeños, pero al final eh, los equipos más pequeños han cargado también a, a equipos más grandes y si están ahí es por algo. Entonces eh, cualquier equipo que, que te toque ya en cuartos eh, va a ser muy difícil. A long wind is the way of saying Benfica. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's wary of Benfica now. <laughs> uh, yeah, very much. And I imagine the city is just starting to get that buzz, yeah, ahead of Sunday, Alexis. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a massive buzz right here now because it is St. Patrick's Day and everyone is definitely out on the town having a good time except us because we're diligent workers. And we were watching Barcelona, of course, in the Europa League. I think that now once that's been done and dusted and, and we know exactly what Barcelona can do and they can finally focus on El Clasico, I think tomorrow things are definitely going to pick up. But a lot of the headlines today in the local media was actually to see what Xavi was going to do for this Europa League match, if he was going to rest certain names and, and kind of just you know have them recuperate in time for El Clasico but he looked like he went for a pretty strong team and hopefully we see another strong team and a more exciting Clasico than we saw last time where it was definitely very much Real Madrid. Alexis head to the theatre turn left go towards Seoul Dubliners Irish bar that'll be a lot of fun tonight what? most definitely <laughs> what? celebrate some oh, Patrick's right. name. Call Dan's name. There you are. Um. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.